I'm gonna do my best to not rant. But with that being said, let's get into it. What's up everybody? Welcome back to The Real Rundown. My name is Ricky Wondike and Oh gosh, where do I begin? Well, I guess it's easy to start with what happened about two weeks ago. And yes, I usually focus on things that happened within the past week, but I haven't had a chance to put out a video until now. And I definitely want to talk about this because it is still semi-fresh. It's still being talked about and it will be talked about for a long time. But I'm just going to say my piece and I'm going to leave it at that. So the NFL Conference Championship Games took place on Sunday, January 20th. First game had the Los Angeles Rams visiting my favorite team, the New Orleans Saints, in the Superdome. Overall, it was a decent game. The main controversy around this is the blatantly missed non-call by the referees where Los Angeles Rams defensive back Nikel Roby Coleman laid a hit on New Orleans State's wide receiver Tommy Lee Lewis before Lewis had a chance to even know what was going to happen and it was a blatant defensive pass interference. A couple other penalties could have been called. Unnecessary roughness, hit on a defenseless receiver, there was a little helmet to helmet contact, that could have been called. But spoiler alert, no flag was thrown and a lot of people obviously in New Orleans were very upset with this non-call I'm gonna try and be unbiased because you I like looking at things from both sides on top of that The Saints had opportunities to end this game and yes to be fair to the Rams fans on the previous drive where the Rams Went down the field there were a few missed calls by the referees in the Saints favor missed face mask unnecessary roughness Etc. And yes, like I said, it is unfortunate that this blatant non-call was made But sadly it happens you have poor officiating and yes this crew I hope and pray I never see them officiating any Saints game ever again Just like how the Rams felt with Bill Vinovich and his team. Prior to this game, every game that they had called for the Los Angeles Rams, the Rams lost every single game. 0-8 with Bill Vinovich as the head referee and his team. Plenty to say about this. I'm not going to stay on it too long because I have other things to talk about. If you want to hear a great take on it, a non-biased take on it, I suggest you go check out Flemlo Raps' video. I'll leave a link to his video in the description down below. But yeah, definitely check it out. Either way, Saints lost, Rams are going to the Super Bowl. And yes, there will be plenty of controversy around this for years to come. People are going to say if the Rams win, the Super Bowl there's gonna be an asterisk next to the championship because they shouldn't have been in the game it is what it is and honestly I'm sick and tired of seeing it I'm sick and tired of hearing about it we're not gonna be able to do anything about it Roger Goodell barely came out with a statement about it 10 days after it actually took place so the NFL is not gonna do anything about it all we can hope now is that we never see Bill Vinovich or his team at any Saints game ever again yes it was heartbreaking the way we lost again uh, the Rams are a great team but let's see how they do in the Super Bowl because they gotta go up against Tom Brady and the Patriots who also had controversial calls in their conference championship game against the Chiefs, there was a very weak roughing the passer call on where he came down and slapped Tom Brady's chest plate. They said he made contact with Tom Brady's helmet. If you saw the play, you would know that was weak. That was a weak call. That set of Tom Brady to do what Tom Brady does and that's go down the field and score. Either way, we have our Super Bowl set, the Los Angeles Rams versus the New England Patriots. Tom Brady going to his ninth Super Bowl, his third consecutive Super Bowl. <sighs> I know people are tired of Tom Brady, but there's a reason he keeps coming back. At the end of the day, Bill Belichick is an amazing coach Tom Brady is an amazing quarterback arguably the best quarterback of all time so he's going to his ninth Super Bowl will he win his six we have to wait to find out this is a tough LA Rams team they do have a lot of firepower on offense they do have a lot of stars on defense it's gonna be a great game but I will say I do believe just like I did last year and the year before that and every time the Patriots are in the Super Bowl I believe the Patriots will win the Super Bowl I was proven wrong last year I was proven right two years ago even when they were down 25 points at halftime and I said they were gonna come back they did so until the clock hits zero and the Patriots lose, I'm going to say the Patriots will win the Super Bowl. Tom Brady will get a sixth ring, but that's just my opinion. If you want a score outcome, I'll go ahead and say 34-31. Reason being, the Patriots, every time they win the Super Bowl, they have never won by more than one possession. Super Bowl 51, they won by a touchdown overtime. Before that, they constantly win by five or less points. So, but either way, 34-31, that's my call. Patriots win. Obviously, Super Bowl Sunday coming up. Very briefly, I just want to discuss the madness that has gone on in the NBA. Trade deadline's coming up in less than a week. There's a lot of trade rumors around Anthony Davis after he told the New Orleans Pelicans he will not be re-signing with the team because he can sign an extension this year. His contract isn't up until next year, but he's had enough of New Orleans. His preferred destination apparently is Los Angeles to play with the Lakers and LeBron James. There have been plenty of teams who have contacted the Pelicans to make a trade happen, including the Lakers, and the Pelicans don't seem very adamant.
complain about trading Anthony Davis at this moment, and they don't have to. Another possible trade destination for Anthony Davis would be the Boston Celtics. They have a great young core, also led by Kyrie Irving. But it seems that for Anthony Davis, that is not a preferred trade destination, as his camp is very of the mindset that Kyrie Irving will lead the Celtics in the offseason. He's a free agent in 2019. In the preseason, he said he would commit to sign. Now, Kyrie Irving is kind of backing off of that and saying, I don't owe anybody any explanation. You can ask me July 1st. There's been a little tension in that locker room for the Celtics this season, and I can definitely see Kyrie leaving. There's rumors saying he'll come to LA to play with LeBron again. Don't know if I see that happening. Enough about rumors. What actually happened was the unicorn Kristaps Porzingis being shipped from the Knicks to the Dallas Mavericks in exchange for DeAndre Jordan, Wesley Matthews, Dennis Smith Jr., and a couple first round picks. So now Kristaps will be paired with Luka Doncic. I think this is a huge win for the Mavericks. They now have a dynamic duo, a young dynamic duo at that. And for the Knicks, I have no idea what they're doing. They're cleaning cap space. They can sign two max contracts this offseason, but... I don't know who's going to want to sign with them. Earlier in the season, there were reports that Kyrie Irving saw New York as a preferred destination. Jimmy Butler might join him there, but it's not looking promising for the Knicks. Unless they make big moves in free agency, hey, good for them. It ended up working out this huge gamble. But until then, this looks like a loss for the Knicks. Again, this is like a win for Mark Cuban and the Dallas Mavericks. So good job for you guys. Finding a perfect replacement for Dirk Nowitzki and having someone to compliment Luka Doncic, who should win Rookie of the Year. That's just my opinion. And I would love to know any opinions from you guys, anything about the conversation championships anything about the super bowl anything about nba trade rumors and the trade that just took place any and all comments leave them down below anyway that's all this time as always thank you so much for watching i hope you guys enjoy the super bowl hopefully it's a good game as always have a great day until next time my name is ricky wandika and this is the real rundown